Give Jesus your praise. Give Jesus your praise. Can you leave your seat? Can you leave your seat? Give Jesus your praise. Hallelujah. I'm, I'm grateful to God to be here. Even though my hands were still shaking. <laughs> I'm grateful to God to be here. Actually, I'm a very shy person. <laughs> but every privilege to speak to God's people, every opportunity to speak with God's people is always a privilege. It's, it just shows that God has given you a word. He has put a word in your mouth for his people. And it's a privilege. I want to thank God for that privilege. And I want to thank Pastor Daniel for that privilege. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you to the pastors as well. Pastor Diola, we celebrate you. Thank you for coming. All the glory must be to the we thank you we bless your holy name because of who you are we say thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you Jesus father we cannot begin to count all the things that you have done but you are good and your mercies endure thank you Jesus thank you Jesus thank you for who you are Thank you for the things that you have done. Thank you for the things that you will do. Thank you for the ones that you have refused to do. Father, we bless your name. Today, oh God, we just want to worship you. Please accept our worship. Let this word be a root in our hearts, oh God. Speak through me in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. 
Can you put your hands together for Jesus as you have your seat? God bless you. Oof, hallelujah. Once again, thank you so much. I'm grateful for the privilege to be standing before us. It's Celebration Sunday. And God has put a word. God has brought forth a word to our hearts. And I would like to speak on a topic titled Unusual Worship. Unusual Worship. I'll be taking my text from the book of Luke chapter 8. Luke chapter 8, verse 43 to 48. Power and might belong to the forever. Okay, so I'll read from here, Luke chapter 8, from verse 43. And the woman, having an issue of blood 12 years, which had spent all her living upon physicians, neither could be healed of any, came behind him and touched the border of his garment. Another version will say the hem of his garment. And immediately her issue of blood stanched. And Jesus said, who touched me? When all denied, Peter and they that were with him said, Master, the multitude throng thee and press thee. And saith thou, who touched me? And Jesus, and Jesus said, somebody has touched me. For I perceive that virtue is gone out of me. And when the woman saw that she was not eat, she came trembling and falling down before him, she declared unto him before all the people, for what cause she had touched them, and how she was healed immediately. And he said unto her, the last verse, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith has made thee whole. Go in peace. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Unusual worship. So God gave me this Bible text for a topic like this. And I'm thinking, okay, so what does worship have to do with the woman of the issue of blood? But go on with me and let me share some things with you. Worship is an expression. It's an expression of reverence to God. Worship is exalting God. Worship is an expression of adoration to God. Worship is when you exalt God. When you, when, you, when you make him as he is. You lift him high in your heart. And that is worship. Putting God in your heart and lifting him above all. And that is worship. And we know many ways to worship God. And we did part of it today. You would dance and you would sing like David. And we, when it's time to worship, we sing a song. And we lift up holy hands. And our hearts are opened in worship. And those are ways that has been, that has been handed over to us to worship God. And it's beautiful. Every time we lift up our hands in worship, it's a beautiful way to worship God. We sing songs unto him like David. Or you dance like David. That somebody will tell you, are you crazy? And, that, and we, we love to worship like that. Or you can even give a sacrifice. Romans chapter 12 says you give your bodies as a living sacrifice because it's an act of service. So that's another way to worship. It's also an unusual way to worship. And you, you, you can give a sacrifice to God and say, God, you've been so good to me this year and I just want to give a seed. It's an act of worship. These are ways to worship. Worship, you can worship with posture. You can worship by witnessing. I shared during why I'm a witnessing in worship. And it's one of 
one of the huge revelations that God has given to me, the place of witnessing in worship. And another way to worship is with the act of obedience. When God says, do this and you do it, it's an act of worship. It's a dedication because you, you know that God has given me an assignment and then you are doing it. It's also an act of worship. It's an expression of reverence and honor. But today I want to speak about another type of worship, which you might know already, but let me just emphasize this a little bit. What it means to be unusual means to do an uncommon thing. You do something that is not the usual thing. It's not the very frequent thing that you do. So it's unusual. That's why it's called unusual worship. And this unusual worship I want to speak about is what the woman here in the book of Luke chapter 8 did. So she was in a crowd of people. She was with a crowd. And they were thronging after Jesus. And everybody had their reasons for coming to that meeting. Everybody came with a desire in their heart. Some probably just wanted to see the Jesus that so many people have spoken about. So maybe, yes, they wanted to get healed. So maybe they were sick and so they just needed to be around Jesus. She also had her reasons for thronging in the crowd. But then there was something peculiar about her story that made it stand out in the scripture. The Bible says that she said in her heart that I will just touch the aim of his garment because I know that if I should touch him, I will be healed. And the Holy Spirit started to emphasize to me that what he saw in the heart of the woman with the issue of blood that made her receive her healing was a very act of worship. The fact that she knew that Jesus wasn't just any man that was passing by. The fact that she knew that Jesus is in the building. The fact that she knew that to him be all power and all glory. That it was an act of worship. Then he took me back to the book of John chapter 4. Ye worship what ye know not of. But the hour has come where the true worshippers. We worship the Father in spirit and in truth. And I beg to explain again that the meaning of truth is that you know who Jesus is. That the meaning of truth is that you believe who Jesus is. And it made me understand that you can, they can tell you that Jesus can heal you. But it's different if you know that he can heal you. They can tell you that Jesus can change your life. But it is different if you believe that he can change your life. That the moment you move from just hearing to knowing is an act of worship. That I'm exalting Jesus above my circumstances. That I am exalting Jesus above my fears and disbelief to know that to him be all power and to him be all glory. Now listen to this. You can also know and believe. You can say you know and believe. But you have prayed one time, two times and it has not happened then your knowing begins to dissipate. But if you truly know the know, if you truly believe the belief, you will not have a double-minded action. So it is possible that you want to touch the hem of his garment, but you draw back sometimes. You say you believe and you want to touch, but each time you're saying, what if it does not happen? In, in worship, there is no what if or if not. In worship, there is no plan B. 
because I am in a place of total worship and submission to believe that who called me is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that I can ask, think or imagine. You know what? Sometimes just like Pastor was sharing when he was teaching about the temptation of Jesus. Sometimes the devil will come to test what you know. If you truly know it. And I believe. I believe that the woman with the issue of blood touched Jesus at first. But maybe she didn't even feel anything. Maybe she didn't know anything happened. But the Holy Spirit taught me that faith and trust in God is believing God when it does not happen. And that is worship. If you worship only when it happens, then you're not worshiping. But you worship when it happens and when it does not happen. When it does it and when it doesn't do it. And you stay there and you worship.
under his view water of them who diligently seek him. And God is calling us today that we will bow in worship. That we will come to that place where we do not see ourselves or see the things that we possess. Or we will not even look at the things that we do not have and others have. We will not look at the things that we wish we have. We will not look at the things that we, we are desiring. Or maybe things are not working well yet. But we will come to that place where we bow. Bow down and worship to you and it's that you truly bow I just came to tell you the heart of God that the questions in your heart is because you are not yet bowing is that you don't truly believe is that you are still having doubts in your mind but can I lead us to bow today can I lead us to touch the hem of his garment in worship? Can I lead us to touch the hem of his garment in worship? Yes, Apostle. I yet I yet we believe in you. We come as a church and we say that we believe in you. We come as a church and we say that we trust in you. We come as a church. Touch the arm of your garment. We touch the arm of your garment. We touch the arm of your garment. We touch the arm of your garment. Oh, so many are crossing and abiding. Oh, no, my toast. celebration Sunday and it's a thanksgiving Sunday but as you thank God worship let your worship be that you believe in God and you're yet to touch him that you bow your heart before him believing in him and just like the woman with the issue of blood as she touched him she was made whole as she touched him, she was made whole. As she touched him, she was made whole. Can I give you two more minutes to worship? See the King of Glory before you and exalt him above all. Exalt him above all. Exalt him above all. Oh, I see. 
joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Now verse 3 says, Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. I've come you to tell you today to know that the Lord is your God. That where you are is because he's your God. That where you are going is because he's your God. That what he's doing right now is because he's your God. I've come to tell you to know that the Lord is your God. I've come to tell you to believe that the Lord is your God. I've come to tell you to acknowledge that the Lord is your God. I've come to tell you to acknowledge that he is your God and you are for him and he is for you. You are for him and he is for you. You must begin to praise God from that understanding. You must begin to praise God from that knowing that he is God, he is suffering. That he is God, he is in charge of your life. That he is God, he will not watch you fall. That he is God, he will not watch you fail. That he is God, he will not leave you disappointed. That he is God, he has brought you this far, he will not leave you alone. That he is God, he has seen you till now. He's not about to give up on you. The Lord is your God. And you are his people. And the sheep of his pasture. And you are his people and the sheep of his pasture. And as I conclude, this kind of worship, this trust kind of worship, this unusual act of worship, is the worship that is able to obtain from the Lord. And that was why he was able to tell her that your faith has made you whole. Because it was a kind of worship that was able to tweak the heart of God and get what she wanted. It was that kind of worship that is able to see the face of God. Can you worship in the spring one minute? of a little girl the image of a, a little girl in the hands of a father and she is sick the hand of the Lord visits her right now the hand of the Lord visits her right now. And we declare our healing in the name of Jesus. We declare our healing in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Quickly, if you've not given your life to Christ, if you 
have not dedicated your life to Christ. And this is a good time to come and give your lives as worship to Him. This is a good time to come before God and say, God, I surrender myself to you. Because it's our first act of worship. And say, God, I surrender my totality to you. I put myself before you. I give you myself. I dedicate myself to you. You want to rededicate your life? Please come forward. You want to give your life to Jesus? Please come forward. You want to give your life to Jesus? Please come forward. forward please come forward and let us pray together for you let us pray for you that you will be made whole indeed in the name of Jesus if nobody's coming can we please rise if we are saved can we please rise up and God has given us a word God has spoken to our hearts and we understand now that our trust in God is a total trust. It's, it's not a trust with doubt because trust is the absence of doubt and we know and we believe in God and we have worshipped God. Can you just pray one prayer that Father Help me to know you more. Help me to serve you more. Help me to know you more. And help me to serve you better. Can you just pray in your heart? Help me to know you more. And help me to serve you better. Because when you know, you understand. When you know, you see what is happening. When you, when you know you understand what is going on. When you know you don't let go. Help me to know you more. And help me to serve you better. Help me to know you more. And help me to serve you better. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Elabakosha dabadabakosha. Ewa kosi anda bala basha da bada bakos. Ewa katale bakosha da gada gada bae. in worship when she made the call well you know you need to make it right with Jesus you know you know you lost your heart of worship your first worship which is your life, your body. But we are coming back today to say, Lord, this is my worship. Can you lift up that right hand wherever you are again? Above your head. Come, come, come. Yes, come. Come. Come, come. Keep coming. Yes, keep coming. You know, yes. Yes, come.
your life is worship. Yes, keep coming, keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. You are still there, come, you are still there, come, you are still there, come.
I made that commitment with God sometimes in 2007 and I've never looked back. Let this day be that day that you, have, that you will declare that I will not look back. That this is the last time I will ever go back to my vomit. Say, Jesus, have mercy upon me. Come into my heart. Make me new. Make me brand new. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we're prayed. Say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for bringing me back to you. In the name of Jesus, I will never go back again. Say it out, I will never go back again. Say it and mean it, I will never go back again. Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord and my Savior. And I will serve you to the end. In Jesus' name. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for those ones that you have brought to yourself. We thank you for the rejoicing in heaven because of them. Be exalted in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray for them with all of my heart. In the name of Jesus, they will never look back again. In the name of Jesus, they will not fail you. These ones will not fail you. On that last day, they will make it to heaven. They will live a fulfilled life. They will live for the kingdom of God. In the name of Jesus, the strength that they need, Father Lord, please give unto them. Let your mercy speak for them all the days of their lives. And every one of us saying amen and praying along with them, we will not miss heaven in Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed.